Bud Light is trying to regain its spot as America's top selling beer after sales dropped 23 percent last month compared to the same period last year. Analysts blame the plunge on a Bud Light ad posted on social media by a transgender TikTok star. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money, too. So many conservatives boycotted Bud Light after the ad went public, and when the parent company tried to distance itself from it, it caused backlash with the LGBTQ plus community. Wall Street Journal reporter Jennifer Maloney joins us now to talk about this. Um, so we should clarify, Jennifer, for people to understand. And, and Dylan makes it clear in her TikTok video there that Bud Light sent her a can. She was celebrating a milestone, and Bud Light sent her a can, um, which she then herself posted on her Instagram. I think the language by uh, some right-wing uh, news sites and, and, and folks and conservative people on social media has been that this was an, a campaign by Bud Light. It was not a campaign in the sense that they spend millions of dollars, they put together an ad budget, yeah. and this is what they're doing, right? Right. It was not a campaign. And it, this can was one single can sent to Dylan Mulvaney as a gift. It was not commercially available on store shelves. So let's talk about what it, it seems like it's turning out to be pretty significant backlash for the company. There have, other, there, uh, there have been other companies who, you know, be, uh, with June being Pride Month, have done all sorts of things. Which is different again and, from And there's like, been backlash. Right. But Bud Light in particular yes. seems to be suffering kind of the most severe backlash. That's correct. It has been really surprising to see the amount of impact this has had on Anheuser Busch. Um, usually, boycotts blow over, and this one didn't. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are some of Bud Light's plans to win consumers back? What are they trying to do? Um, and and I guess the question then becomes. Um, and this is why I was trying to seek to, to get clarification on whether this was a campaign or not, because if this wasn't really a campaign, then they're probably kicking themselves because this is something that they're losing a significant portion of their revenue for, yeah, for a one-off. Yeah. For a one-off. Right. It was a one-off. It was not some concerted effort. It wasn't some big, um, big investment by the company. Uh, we're going to like go all in on trans rights. It wasn't that at all. Um, it, so right now, uh, Anheuser Busch is is planning to launch a new series of television ads this week, actually, um, leaning into the themes of country music and football, which are themes that resonate with their drinkers. Um, they're going to try to claw back some of that lost sales volume, um, and they're trying to steer clear of um, you know politicized uh, issues such as this. Although they have said that they will continue to support the LGBT groups that they have supported for decades, I should note that you know Bud Light has sponsored pride parades for really for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're trying to walk a fine line here. I think a lot of companies have been trying to do that. I think a lot of companies were caught off guard because a lot of the things that they had been doing to celebrate or mark pride, they'd been doing for decades. And they have no idea why the backlash is, is so severe now. Um, I thought to myself, man, Bud should just lean into it then. You know what I mean? Well, like what's interesting is, as she's pointing out, that they have in the past done campaigns specifically for pride. Right. And no one has had a problem with that. Yeah. So the question is, and again, this is just how social media blows things up, right? It was just one can. It was a custom can yeah. for Dylan. She then posted it, and then it became, oh, Bud Light is trying right. to do this. And that's not really what happened. And you know the other thing I think is happening too, Vlad? You know, they can sort of focus on things that they think are not political, like country music. But everything has become political yeah, now. There are so sadly. many landmines that it's so difficult to avoid offending someone. Trans rights really have become a focal point of conservative politics in the U.S. I mean, you think about um, legislation restricting um, gender-related health care in many states, um, you know, restricting athletes' sports play um, for transgender you know, participants and book bans um, in school libraries. So, you know, trans rights in particular have really become a flashpoint. So, Jennifer, ultimately, I mean, you cover this industry. Um, you write about business for the journal. I mean... When are people going to stop thinking that corporations 
that sole, that their sole existence is to provide shareholder value and to sell you something is somehow aligned with a person's values. I remember, remember when Pepsi back in 2017 had that ad featuring Kendall Jenner, which was about racial discrimination, and everybody was like, okay, Kendall Jenner, I mean, love her for whatever yeah. she does, but like, what does she know about like the struggle that African Americans have gone through? And Pepsi, in other words, it's like, oh, Pepsi cares about you know, yeah. African-American issues, not really. They're just trying to align themselves with something that they yeah. think will get you to s separate your dollars from your dollars, right? So it's but just- I, But I think that's the point. I, don't, I think that what people are aware of is that they want to separate you from your money. And so in that way, you have some sort of influence on the company, mm. right? Because you can just not give them your money. Mm -hmm. Whereas you don't have a lot of influence on, I don't know, politicians who you voted into office that do something different. Right. Or, uh, you know, maybe your own personal boss that you're trying to get a raise from. But with companies, you can say, listen, you know, you promise me something and I'll give you this dollar. If you don't give me what I promise, I'll give my dollar to someone else. So the question ultimately, Jennifer, and I know we got to wrap this up, mm -hmm. is are you going to see companies continue to lean in on some of these social justice issues or are they going to start pulling back from them? Well, certainly there are conversations in C-suites and boardrooms across the country about this, this challenge right now. Um, and I think you'll see brands trying to um, lean into issues that they feel resonate with their consumers. Um, the, the particular problem that Bud Light ran into was that they sort of touched a nerve with their core, some of their core constituency, you know, of Bud Light drinkers. Um, it, it's not the same as, say, like a Nike supporting transgender rights that maybe aligns better with the values of their core customers. Interesting. Jennifer Maloney, thank you. Thanks so much for having me.